This is not the moment for us to turn our backs on globalization. This, let's not let globalization become a bad word. Let's defend it, let's exalt it, uh, and indeed defend global free trade. And uh, by the way, if you, all you military chaps, and women, obviously, <laughs> think that global free trade or free trade is not uh, the province of, of the military. I wonder whether you can, you know what Article 5 of NATO says, don't you? Yes. Do you know what Article 2 of the Washington Treaty says? Who knows what Article 2 of the Washington Treaty says? If you're, here you are, this is the Munich Security Conference. Is anybody paying attention at the back? John Chipman, do you know what Article 2 of the Washington Treaty says? Does anybody know? It, no, it doesn't say spend money. Uh, it, 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 no, it should. Uh, it says, <laughs> a very good idea, uh, it says that NATO members will seek to eliminate conflict in their international economic policies and will encourage economic collaboration between any and all of them. Isn't that fantastic? Did you know that? NATO is a charter for free markets and free trade and breaking down economic barriers. You didn't even know that. And who needs the EU when you've got NATO? I sometimes wonder. Uh, and I, I, I say all that. I say all that. When I say all that, I say all that, of course, because it is free trade uh, uh, that has driven our global prosperity. And uh, finally, stick up for our common defense. Stick up for NATO. Uh, stick up for, for global free trade. And then we've got to stick up for our values, our Western values, which are obviously not geographically located in the West, but which are universal, as, as Senator McCain has, has rightly said. Uh, we need to stick up for the rules-based system, and we need to keep our promises when we make promises. And when people cross uh, red lines and use chemical weapons against their own populations, uh, then uh, they should face a price. And we should exact that price. And if one power annexes the territory of another in breach of the UN Charter and the Helsinki Final Act, then we must remain absolutely uh, robust in imposing the sanctions that are demanded by that kind of aggression. Because in the end, in the end, it is the certainty and the stability of the rules-based international order of the last 70 years that has created unparalleled, that has been the foundation, the bedrock for unparalleled economic growth. Because it's the rule of law that guarantees fairness between people and companies and countries. And in the end, it's the rule of law that is therefore the foundation of freedom and of prosperity. And I just want to answer the three big questions that are posed by, that I'm told, are floating around this conference in the, in the corridors like a miasma or a turnip ghost. The three great questions, or several turnip, the three questions that are being asked, is Brexit, does Brexit mean the end of the EU? Emphatically not. Emphatically not. We may be leaving the EU, but we're not leaving uh, Europe. We will remain supportive of our friends and partners in the EU, as I've said to them many, many times. Uh, as in a metaphor that I think I've, I nicked from Winston Churchill, we will be outside the main body of the cathedral, but we will be there like a flying buttress. This was mistranslated once as a flying bucket, uh, but when they, they got the point, uh, they understood it. Uh, we will be there. Uh, the second question is, are we seeing the obsolescence of NATO? And my, again, my answer is absolutely not. We are seeing the beginning of reform and change in NATO, and certainly a recognition that other countries need to step up to the plate and spend 2% of their GDP on defense, uh, as we do. And the, th the final question is, are we seeing the end of globalization? Let alone the end of the West. And the answer is emphatically not. We'd be mad. We'd be mad to erect commercial barriers between us, wouldn't we? How mad, how foolish we would be. And I just want you to know that there is at least one country represented here today that will shortly, as a result of a decision we've recently made, be liberated to do free trade deals once again after 44 years with any and all comers around the room. And you know where to find us. Thank you. Where are we going to be? We're going to be in Europe. 
geographically, culturally, intellectually, spiritually, and in every other important respect. So you're, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you see in Europe uh, a slipping away from some of the democratic principles and free, even free market principles that you espoused. I wonder. Where, where are you seeing that? Well, I mean, I'm thinking, for example, in Turkey, uh, with uh, you know, again, candidate member, but is m less like the, your vision of Europe today than it was five years ago. How, how, if you're standing here as one of the most articulate proponents of Western globalization, what do you say to the countries that are seeing what's happening, both within the EU and outside of it, and are saying? We're worried. What, what, what we see and what we hear is making us think that we should be hedging more towards alternative models. And for some, that might be the Russians. For some, it might be for Chi the Chinese. For some, it might be just looking after themselves and not caring about global Britain. How do you respond to that? I, I think they'd be, they would be way, way too pessimistic. And yes, look, I'm not going to deny. I mean, Bert, I don't think you and I really disagree about this. The, the world has been going through a very difficult time, and uh, you know, the you know, global conflict is, is rising again, but uh, it's, it's rising, I'm afraid, very largely because of the, the failures of, uh, collective failures of our governments to, to deal with the problem, to, to scotch it at, uh, at the beginning. We, we failed to deal with the Syrian crisis in the way that we might have done. We stepped back. That did not happen under the new uh, Trump administration. Uh, there are all sorts of uh, crises. Uh, look at what's happened in uh, in Ukraine. Uh, that didn't happen under the uh, the current administration. Those are the, the the crises that affect us. Now, yes, of course, uh, you know there will be a certain amount of plaster that comes off the ceiling when these executive orders are are, are issued. And, and and you know either we had one the other day, uh, as you know, about a travel ban with which the the UK government did not agree, and we had to uh, talk to the uh, to the White House and to the, to the Trump administration to, to, to try and hammer it into a bit of, uh, a bit of shape there. Um, and we won't necessarily agree on everything. But this is a guy, and, and I, I appreciate what uh, John McCain says about his team. He has a fantastic team around him. All the conversations that Bert and I and others have been having with Rex Tillerson over the last a couple of, of days have been incredibly reassuring. Rex clearly understands and has thought deeply about some of the conflicts that uh, everybody's now looking to the US to address, but particularly, particularly uh, Yemen, uh, Libya, and, and of course, Syria and Iraq. Uh, I, am, I am optimistic about this, folks, um, not least because I have no option. But give, what I would say to you is give, give these guys and give Donald Trump a chance. Give Donald, yes, it's a new style of government, but don't underrate the capacity for a, a new approach to deliver results. Uh, I would like to tell to the Foreign Minister of the UK that the word liberation in the history of Europe has a very strong meaning. And in these challenging times we are, talking about liberating Britain from the European Union is just bad taste. Thank you. I said, come on, I, I have to say, I, 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 hesitate, I hesitate to accuse you of pomposity, uh, but the, the, word, the word liberation clearly means, it, it's etymologically equivalent to being freed. Uh, and we are, it is, uh, I'm afraid, uh, an undeniable fact that uh, we have, the UK has been unable to do, uh, to run its own trade policy for uh, 44 years, uh, we now have an opportunity to do exactly that. I think people should be very proud and very excited about that, and that is exactly what we are. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to reclaim the English language, uh, if I may. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why I should not use the word uh, liberation uh, to refer to our ability uh, to take back control of our tariff schedules in Geneva and do our own free trade deals. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to uh, disagree with you emphatically. But if you'd done liberation, perhaps, I mean, that might have been more. What's that? Just said liberation. I mean, maybe that might have gone over better. I'm just helpful. There's a French uh, newspaper. Like, okay. We're not occupying you, and we're not a prison. No, 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 no. no. We're question, neither occupying please, you, neither we're a prison. No.